Okay, so this video is going to cover how to calculate continuously compounded interest. Um, this is very similar to regular compound interest, um, but we are just considering what happens when we're not compounding our interest monthly or daily or yearly, but all the time, from moment to moment. So we have a new formula that goes with this. This is objective 7.4 for pre-cal. That formula is A equals P E to the R T power. Um, it's very similar to the regular compound interest formula. We still say that A is our principal, which of course the principal is your initial value. A is going to be our uh, the amount that we accumulate. which will be our final value. R is your yearly interest rate. It has to be in years. It will be as a decimal. Um, for example, 4% would be 0 0.04. So that's the way you're going to calculate that. And then T is time elapsed in years. Um, the one thing that throws some students off is this E. We need to remember that this E is not a variable. E is a number. So if you're taking E, there is a button on your calculator. And when you, if you were to push E and hit enter, it should give you a number. It's kind of like pi and that it goes on forever. Um, the, the formula that derives E is a little complicated. It requires us to use some calculus, so we're not really going to go into what that is in this video. But just, you just need to remember that E is an irrational number, very similar to pi. It goes on forever. It's somewhere close to 3. It's about 2.71828, et cetera. Um, so if you know this much, you should be okay to start using the formula. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this. Go ahead and pause and take notes if you need to. Let's look at an example. I'm just going to do some of the examples that I did in class when we taught this the first time around. So once again, your formula. Um, keywords that we're looking for whenever we're solving a problem like this are interest and continuously compounded. So here's an example. You are saving money in an account that gives 9% interest compounded continuously. And I've got that bolded because that's your buzzword. That means you're going to use this formula and not the other compound interest formula. Um, we want to get $800 after two and a half years. We want to know how much principal should we invest. So what we're going to do, let me move this up here. Let's see what part of our formula we know and what part of the formula we don't know. Uh, looks like we want $800. So I want my final value to be $800. Okay. Um, I'm looking for the principal, so I don't know P. Of course, E is not a problem because it's not a variable. Um, my rate, 9%, 9% interest rate, that's going to equal 0 0.09 as a decimal. And our time is two and a half years, so we're going to have to multiply by 2.5 because T does have to be in years. Um, as complicated as this might look, it is all work that we can do in our calculator. So I want you to focus on this part right here. We're solving for P, but this is a number. This whole thing right here is just a number, and we're going to use our calculator to calculate what that is. So if you take your calculator, you should have an E button somewhere on calculators like this, the TI-84. It is um, the second function of the natural log. So I'm going to do E. And I'm raising that to the 0.09 times 2.5 power. So I'll show you that should be what this is. We'll hit enter. So you get 1.25232716. It might be a little go a little bit further, a little bit less on your calculator. Um, I don't want to write this down, but I'm going to go ahead and store it as the variable x. Um, your calculator should have a function similar to that. So I'm just going to know that I stored this as x. So now I have 800 equals px. 
And of course, now it should look a little more obvious. I'm going to divide both sides by x. And I'll get p is approximately, if I do 800 divided by x, 638.812975. Uh, but remember, we are solving for principal, which is money. So we would say our final answer is about $638.81, because we do need to round appropriately. All right, so the amount of principal we need to invest compounded continuously to get $800 after two and a half years is $638.81. I'll give you a second. If you need to take notes, pause the video, but I'm going to move on and we're going to try another one. Sometimes we're not solving for the principal. In theory, as long as you know the formula, you should be able to solve for any part of it. So I want to do one where we solve for a different part. So this time, we are investing $600. Investing, that's $600, that's our principal. Uh, with a goal of saving up to $1,000, that's our amount accumulated. We know the initial and the amount accumulated. And we want to do so in 10 years. So let's write in what we know. We know we're starting with $600. We want to end with $1,000. Uh, e is always E. Our rate, well that's what we're looking for. If interest is compounded continuously, and that, that again, I, I got a little ahead of myself because I knew I was using this formula, but continuously, that tells us to use this one. What annual interest rate does the account need to have? We're solving for R, which means we're going to say T is 10 and R is a variable. Um, now to solve this, we need to isolate the term that has the exponent where our variable is, which means I need to isolate this. Hopefully you see what to do first, but we're just going to need to divide both sides by the 600. So we'll say 1,000 divided by 600. You can leave it as a fraction, but I'm going to get I'm going to get a very simple decimal I can just plug in. Well, that is 1.6 repeating, or if you want to leave it as a fraction, you can say it's 5 thirds. So 5 thirds equals e to the 10r power. And of course, to get rid of this base, we need to take a logarithm of both sides. I'm going to move up where I've got a little more room. I apologize. We have 5 thirds equals e to the 10 r power. To get that variable out of our exponent, we need to take a logarithm, um, or we can take the natural log. I prefer to take the natural log when we're dealing with e. So we're going to say ln of 5 thirds equals ln of e. Of course, when we take the natural log, that brings our variable down out of the exponent, becomes a coefficient. And now we just need to divide both sides by the ln of e. If you prefer, you can use the log instead of the natural log. It doesn't really matter. Uh, these will cancel. So I'm going to say ln of 5 thirds divided by the ln of e, or e to the first, if you have to do that. You get it's about 0.5108256. I'm going to score that in my calculator. I'm just going to leave it on the screen. Um, let's just go ahead and store this as x on my calculator. I'll push the store button or wherever that is, min bear. Hit x. So it's stored. And now I'll have x equals 10r. And I just need to divide both sides by 10. So r is approximately x divided by 10, or 0 0.05108. So my percentage, I need to take this and turn it into a percentage, which means I need to move the decimal place over to. So we would say about 5.108%.